Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Eric Parker with One Number. Thanks for checking in for another video with us. Uh, this week we're going to focus on how groups work in Tableau Desktop. Um, so we're actually going to look at four different methods of grouping all together, talk about where they're similar and where they're different, and when you might want to use some of them. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll dive in together. Uh, first type of grouping that we're going to talk about are data pane groups. And when we talk about data pane groups, what we're talking about is going to the data pane in Tableau. Uh, it'll be on the left side of your screen, just hitting the drop down on a field and then saying create group and manually grouping values. So you can see here that how to create, you, know, you make those selections and the visual output is that group values will be consolidated into fewer data points or into those groups when that field is visualized. So let's go ahead and look at an example together. Uh, so we'll work with some sample superstore data and we're going to use the subcategory field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to track down this subcategory field. Okay. And I'm just going to hit the drop down next to that field. And I'm going to say create group. Okay. So notice that once I've made that selection, there's a list of a bunch of subcategories that I have available to me. And if I wanna group them, I'm just gonna do something silly, like I'll have accessories through furnishings. So I'll just click accessories, then shift select furnishings. This group will be A through F. And then I'm gonna go down to labels and shift select through tables. Hit the group icon there. And this will just be L through T. So just manually selecting these values, you know, if other subcategories showed up in our data set later, they wouldn't automatically be added to one of these. So we would need to come back and manually uh, assign those values. So generally speaking, groups are best for uh, fields that aren't going to change very often, um, or maybe for just kind of a point in time, one-off analysis, okay? You can always rearrange values within groups as well. So if I decide later that I want labels to be a part of a different group, I can I could drag that and move that around, uh, but we won't really be covering that in as much detail today. So I'll hit okay. Notice now that I have this new field over here in my data pane called subcategory group. I'm gonna select that field and drag and drop that on rows before subcategory. And you'll see that I just have the two distinctions, A through F, and L through T. So no reason you couldn't just use groups exclusively like that in Tableau. And if you ever wanna go back and edit it, you just hit the drop down next to it, select edit group, and you can you know reassign values or if you wanna find something like, oh, I need to find accessories, you can select find and do that. That's just a little bit about quick data pane grouping. Okay. So the second type of group we're gonna look at are called visual groups. So visual groups, the way that you set these up is that once you have a visual build, whether that's a bar chart or a scatter plot, you can select the data points and click the group icon, which looks like a paperclip. Um, so once you've done that, the grouped values end up being given different colors. So I've got this scatter plot here showing me um, sales and profit across my different subcategories in the Superstore data. So I'm just going to create a few different groups here. Um, maybe I'll just do unprofitable subcategories, uh, highly profitable and slightly profitable and something like that. So we go ahead and select this first, these first values here. Okay, so you can see I've just clicked on these three data points. And then notice when I hover over and I hold for a moment, it pulls up my tooltip. And on the tooltip are these command buttons, keep, exclude. And then you can see this little paperclip icon here, group members. So if I select that, notice that what it's done, it's actually got a new group now called subcategory group one. And what it's done is it's actually put that field on color in my marks card as well as it uh, put the color legend out there to, to let me know that it's being utilized. And you can see the difference in color, right? So those, there's those three that I selected and then there's all of the others. So now if I make yet another selection, so I'm gonna mix this up a little bit from what I said earlier. 
let's call, let's say there's a group that are like kind of our high performers, right? So high sales and high profit. So I select these circles, hover over, hit group. And then I'll just have everybody else, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I want to do some renaming of these different group values. A couple places that I can go to do that. So one of them is I can actually just go to the color legend. So right here where it's just started to concatenate the names, accessories, binders, chairs. I can right click there and select edit alias. And I'll just call this high sales, high profit. So that's one way to make these changes. Uh, the other way is to do pretty much exactly what we were doing in the manual grouping or the data pane grouping, which is to say that I can go to this new group in the data pane, hit the drop down, select edit group. So then here, like bookcases, supplies, tables, I might rename that unprofitable. So I'll just do the other rename here as well. Uh, lower sales slash lower profit. Okay. And then if I want to um, assign some different colors, I could do that as well. So I'm going to click on the color tab in the marks card, select edit colors. So maybe high sales, high profit is green, unprofitable is orange, lower sales, lower profit is gray. That's fine. And then the colors are kind of subtle here, but if I end up using this in a different worksheet, so let's say that I go ahead and just craft a new worksheet here, and I'm looking at, let's say, sales by subcategory. Do a little sort. And I'll grab that new group that we've created and drop that on color. So one nice thing is that once you set the colors for a group in one worksheet, it will carry through to other worksheets as well. So you can see here that tables actually cracked our top four for sales, um, but it ended up being in the unprofitable category because we didn't make any money on it. All right, so two more kinds of groups we're gonna look at. Uh, first of those is header groups, okay? So header groups, a little bit different than visual groups. Instead of selecting the data points, like in that scatter plot, we selected the circles. We're actually gonna select the text labels themselves to create the groups. Now, one of the biggest differences is instead of just assigning all the individual data points different colors, it's actually gonna consolidate multiple data points into a single grouped value. And I will show this by editing, but one of the biggest things that's very different about header groups than visual groups is header groups only grouped values and leaves all the other individualized values to do their own thing. Whereas visual groups, it groups the selected values, but it actually groups all of the unselected values as well. So like I said, we'll, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail here. Okay, so for header groups, let's go ahead and just keep using these same subcategories. Let's keep it familiar. So let's say there's a few of these smaller subcategories that I want to consolidate into a single bar. So I'll go down here and you can either control select individual values if they're not next to each other, or you can shift select. So if I click paper and then shift select down through fasteners, that'll select all these labels. So big, big difference, okay? Let's, let's make sure we get this part. We're not selecting the bars because that's visual groups. We are selecting the labels, right? So I click on paper, shift select down through fasteners. Okay, now I click my group icon and watch the difference here these six or so bars that I've just selected all consolidate into a single bar. And then where I can go to edit this one is I can edit the alias. I can just right click on this label, say edit alias. And now again, instead of this concatenated name, I could call this um, all of our desk supplies. Uh, I'll say that desk supplies. Okay, so let's go back to see what's going on. So this is subcategory group two. Notice I just keep creating new groups based on subcategory, so it just keeps adding numbers to them. Um, so it actually automatically put that field on the row shelf. You can see that up here. So two things. First of all, let's put our subcategory field after the row shelf so we can see this again. All right, so you can see desk supplies breaks out into all of those individual subcategories. Okay. 
And then I noticed, or and I mentioned that the way that the groups for header groups and visual groups works is pretty different. So let me just do some renaming here for a moment of these field names so we can keep this all straight. So this is the one we just created and I'll call this header group. And this subcategory group one is the one that we created in the previous step. So I'll call this one visual group. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up header group and edit. So what you'll see, all those desk supply subcategories I selected are put in one group and notice all the other individual subcategories are just left alone entirely. The difference is in visual groups, you can see here, high sales, high profit, that was a selection we made. Unprofitable was a selection we made. Lower sales, lower profit was originally just a group called other that we renamed. So um, that's a little bit about those header and visual groups and, and how they're different. Okay. So last type of group we want to look at, and this one is uh, a, a little bit of its kind of own category. These first three were similar. This one's a bit off on its own. We're gonna look at geographic groups. So geographic groups allow you to select geographic entities, typically um, encoded in more of a sort of shape or filled in format. So think like the outline of a state or a country. And what happens is when you select those values and group them, Tableau will create effectively a, for lack of a better or probably more proper term, effectively kind of like an ad hoc shape file for your geographic entities, okay? So I've just, on this uh, worksheet here, I've just got some different states from within the US. And let's say I just wanna group these into a few of my own custom territories. So nothing special here so far, just state on detail, latitude, longitude on rows and columns. So actually I'm gonna do a different type of selection tool. I'm gonna to choose the lasso selection. So let's say I wanna get some of what I'm gonna call my Western states. So that would be everything from like New Mexico and Colorado and all that on over. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this little group icon here. Really important point um, if you are grouping on geographic entities, just make sure that you group, if, there, if it's multiple, if it's like city, state or state, country in this case, just make sure that you group on both of those dimensions. Otherwise you could end up with weird gaps later on. I've seen that happen where like if you group on county and state, well, let's say you group on Lincoln County. Well, Lincoln County might exist in like 20 different states. So if you do that, um, and we're actually gonna take some of our individual geographic fields off this worksheet later, it can end up leaving weird gaps in your map. So anyways, take my word for it. You can try and do it the wrong way yourself if you want. Just make sure that you group on both dimensions if you can remember to do that. So notice it's very similar to visual group so far. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and just grab some random states that I'll call the Northeast. And uh, let's just do this. Whatever, this doesn't really matter. We're just kind of messing around here. Okay. So let me just do some quick renames of this. Again, notice similar to visual groups so far. So red, um, this will be the Southeast. Um, blue is just gonna be West. Green is gonna be uh, North Central. I'll just call it NC for short. Uh, gray will be South Central and orange is northeast. Okay, so how these vary from visual groups, right? Very similar so far. Now, the big difference is first of all, notice that the region, the country, region, and state group that got created, that's already been put on color, right? You can see that happening in real time as we were making selections. And now check this out. If we remove country and state from detail, it actually retains the shape of our groups, even without the state details on our worksheet. So latitude and longitude need to stay. But I just wanna show you this. 
So what's special about this country, region, and state group, notice that it has not only the little geographic symbol next to it, but also the paperclip indicating that this is a special kind of group. It's a geographic group. So it's able to create these sort of custom shapes for us. All right. So thanks for uh, coming along for this dive into groups. Hopefully this helps clear the air. Uh, maybe you've seen some weird behavior before, and now this has helped explain some of that. Um, definitely feel free to drop something in the comments if you have any further questions about that. And I look forward to catching you on another video soon.